today we will have uh, a walkthrough of the role of the referee and it will be with our technical committee member Tryggve Dunn from Norway who will uh, run the seminar. But first of all, I would like to welcome, welcome you all once again. And we are very happy to see so many. And uh, I can see that there will be much more people coming in. So please just join and send out the link so everybody uh, are able to, to, to join this seminar. My name is Tina Beider, and I am the chairwoman of technical committee. And I'm also vice president of European Weightlifting Federation. And together with me in the technical committee, we have uh, Troy Gudun, we have Patrick Helgeson, we have Georgia Tayon, and we have Arayik Alavardian. So thank you so much to all of you for helping with this seminar. And uh, before I give the floor to Mr. Dun, I would like to see if uh, the president is available. Mr. Antonio Conflitti, if he would like to say a few words. Or if, oh, you are there, you are there. I couldn't see you. Good evening, my friend. Would you like to say some words before we start? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tina. Good evening. Welcome to the second edition of our seminars, our AZWF. Uh, we are very, very, very happy to see a lot of, of ITO and also candidates to be ITO following us uh, our seminar. Thank you so to Tina. Thank you to all the staff for taking a committee, Trigi, all the staff for this. To repeat this year, a very interesting um, format of seminars. Uh, we will continue, I hope, as soon as possible. We, did, we improve with new platforms and let's let's move forward with the seminars. You are here not to listen to me, but to listen to our our specialist in this uh, domain is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. President. It means a lot for us that you will uh, join this and, and make a short speech. So, so thank you again. And the General Secretary, Mr. Milan Mikhailovich, do you like to say a few words before we start? Just to say hello, Tina, hello, Trigve, here, all, all dear colleagues. It's uh, more than important to have such kind of education, such kind of seminar. And uh, it, really, it is not easy to be a referee. And we are lucky that Trigve will explain the, how it is easy uh, to be a referee, how to do, what to do, in which moment. And uh, I am not jealous on him for this role that he has uh, uh, this evening, because uh, it's not easy, it's, it, it is difficult. And uh, on the other side, it is very important. Thank you all and good luck. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. General Secretary. And um, so we are about to start and I will uh, help Trykve. If any of you will ask questions, please do it in the chat. And I will stop Trykve and then we will ask the question and maybe he can explain in another way or he can explain whatever is asked for. So we will start now with the role of the referee. Please, Mr. Trykve Dunn. Thank you, Tina. I will share a screen here with you. Like this. Uh, can you confirm, Tina, that uh, you can see this? I confirm. We can see it. Perfect. Uh, I have went through the IWF uh, PDF uh, and picked out uh, some of the most important rules uh, for the referees. Uh, one hour is not enough to go through everything. So something we, I will just not mention, something I will just mention, but don't talk so much about it. And then I have some examples and videos uh, that we could look at uh, to see the different things. Um, so I'll just start. Let me see here now to tell the next one. First of all, uh, when you are a referee or whatever uh, kind of position you have, you must remember to be objective. It's extremely important that all referees do their job in a 100% objective way. A referee must make sure to be impartial. We can see that from time to time, 
I nearly see it, I think I see it uh, at nearly every competition that it is difficult for uh, some referees to be completely objective. It does not matter who is on the platform. If you see a mistake, you must press the red button. And also when, when there is a lifter from your own country, don't, uh, and, and you have to do the same as assessment of the lift also when it is an opponent of a lifter from your own country. Do not be harder in your assessment when the opponent makes his or her lift. I also seen that from time to time. So uh, if the ITOs will, shall keep their respect among the lifters, we really, really have to take care about this. Very important. I know that uh, some countries, maybe most countries or many countries, push their ITOs uh, to be in favor of their own country. Don't let them push you. Be objective. Everyone can see it if you are not. You have to be presentable. That means you need to have a perfect knowledge of the IVF TCRR. You have to prepare to read the rules. When you come to the competition, you should know what your job is and what the rules says. So uh, you should really, at every competition, open the rule book and read it before you go to the competition. That makes you a better uh, referee. It's important to be in time at the, the way in and at the uh, competition when you, because if everyone is waiting for you, uh, they will not be sure, is he coming or is he not? So be there in time. And I would say for the way in at least 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes before the way in starts, you should be outside the way in room. And uh, to make sure that everything is okay, that the door is unlocked, like we had some problems in Armenia a couple of days in the morning. So uh, to be there, to be polite to everyone, to use the correct uniform, the correct tie is a part of the uniform, to have a clean desk, don't sit eating at, uh, at the, the referee table, or don't have a lot of papers, do not have a lot of papers on your desk to be seated until after the medal ceremony. I can see that from time to time that the referees forget that the medal ceremony is a part of the competition. The competition has not finished before after the medal ceremony. And uh, I have seen also referees using their mobile phone to take photos, not during the lift, but after the lift. And uh, I have seen it a lot of times uh, during the medal ceremony, it is not allowed. It doesn't look good. So keep the, your phone or your photo uh, in your bag until you have left your seat. This was, uh, what, what should I say, the important part that is, uh, has nothing to do with the refereeing, but I always start to mention that. Uh, and then when I will not say anything about the way in here because we have no time for it, but I will mention a rule change or uh, so, some small things in the end about the way in. Yeah, we are all talking about undergarments and new things will come, but I will, I will talk about it later. So I will go directly to the competition. And uh, the, the following slides will be before the attempt. Before the attempt, check and make sure that the weight announced by the speaker is correctly loaded on the bar. For example, like here, that there's one kilo on the one side and a two kilo on the right side. You, see, you can see the green and the blue disc there. Then the referee, if the technical controller doesn't see it, if the speaker doesn't see it, please raise your hand and say, stop, the bar is not correctly loaded. It's more important to tell than uh, having a mistake by the lifter. Maybe it's, it can even uh, cause an injury if we don't stop them. So this is very, very important. And uh, we can see it on, on nearly every competition that uh, we make mistakes here. So this is the first mistake you can do actually. 
is that you don't not notice the, the disks. So pay attention. If the barbell is not in the center of the platform, ask the loaders to move it. If the technical controller doesn't do it, or the speaker doesn't do it, uh, the center referee can easily see it, and he should raise his arm and say, "Stop! Can you please move uh, the barbell to the center of the platform?" And you must never allow the coach or anyone else to interfere with that. Sometimes the coaches ask the loaders push the barbell in front or, or back, but the loaders should always place it in the center. That's important. <clears throat> when the referees see blood on the bar, uh, normally the, the loader should see that, and it's also the technical controller's job. But as we all know, the technical controller is on the side of the of the platform, he's, uh, and it can be difficult to him to, to see it. Uh, sometimes it's actually easier for the referees to see it. Request the loaders to clean the bar. If the loaders don't understand what you're telling them, you must report it to the technical controller or even to the jury members if, if something doesn't ha happen. And you can use gestures. It will make it more easily and understood. Don't be afraid to do this because it's a lot of people in the competition hall. I can understand, for example, in Armenia, where, where it was very, very crowded uh, in, any, in some groups. And of course, uh, you should be, shall be experienced and, and uh, believe in yourself to stop the competition and tell them you must, you must clean the bar. But do it. It's important. Okay, so we are getting closer to the uh, lift. The clock will, if the timekeeper does his job, the clock will be stopped as soon as the bar is lifted from the platform. But the referees shall wait until the bar reaches the height of the knees. Then they will adjudicate the lift. So, uh, the referees must count as no lift any unfinished attempt in which the barbell has reached the height of the knees. Once the barbell has reached the knee level, the attempt is complete. And, the, and if the athlete lowers the barbell in this case, she cannot repeat the attempt. You must press the red one. We have seen that uh, at many uh, competitions. Uh, it, it's starting to get better and better, but it's actually very, very difficult to see how high did he lift it before he dropped it down again? Uh, in Armenia, I think the referees did a very good job on this. I didn't see any mistakes uh, on this in, in Armenia. So, so, but this is also one of the first mistakes we often do in a competition. And we do it once, then we remember. So pay attention to this. I hope everyone understood what I mean. Because the lift has started when the bar leaves the platform, but you shall not adjudicate it before it reached the height uh, of the knees. So that's, that's the rule. If, of course, if at the end of the allocated time, the athlete has not raised the barbell from the platform, you have to press red. Remember to do that because uh, uh, otherwise the competition system will not go on. The, the computer will not understand. And of course we have to mark with the red uh, sign that this is a failed lift. It's a, no, it's a no lift. It's very, sometimes we forget it because it's quite obvious uh, that it shall not lift after the time has passed, but uh, press the red one. And also uh, as Tina told you last week uh, about the, the role of the jury, Pay attention to the to the timing clock. Uh, she told us that uh, she often asks one you remember also to watch the, the clock because it's difficult sometimes to both look at the, the watch and also uh, look at the uh, at the lift. So so be attentive. Okay, we go for the incorrect movements. These. Uh, which I have listed here. I will not show uh, some any video of those. I've just mentioned them, and then we go to the videos. 
the first one uh, is pulling from the hang. Uh, often the between the knees and the and the hip, the some people uh, or lifters stop during the pull, and that's obvious a red light. It's difficult sometimes to see, uh, but if you're sure, you can see uh, the, the barbell is stopping. Uh, you should press the red button. It's also forbidden to touch the platform with any part of the body other than the feet. Some lifters, uh, when they, especially in snatch, they can, the, their bottom can uh, touch the platform. We have seen that from time to time, and it can actually be very, very difficult also to, to see because it goes so fast. Uh, it's forbidden also to leave the platform or touching the area outside the competition platform during the, the lift. Uh, another thing is not facing the center referee at the beginning of the lift. So when the lift starts, the athlete must uh, have his head straight against the forward to the, to the center referee. He cannot move the bar to avoid looking in the eyes of the referee. <laughs> he must accept that. And uh, then you have releasing the barbell from an incomplete position. I will go through all these by pictures later on today. But, uh, but you can, uh, if, if the lifter released the barbell from an incomplete position, it's a red light. And also uh, pose during the extension of the arms. It's not allowed. So if in the, in the cliff, especially in the jerk, if there's a stop and then they press out, it's, uh, it's not allowed. Okay, now I hope the videos will uh, will work with the sound here. Let me see. Um, we will first see a video uh, with a press out. When we are talking about press out, we are talking about continuing the extension of the arms after the athlete has reached the lowest point of his or her position in the squat, squat or split or for both the snatch and the jerk. Um, it's sometimes difficult to, to see the difference between uh, uh, the previous one, this one, the pose, and uh, the press out, and the next one, bending, extending, which we'll all, also have a look at. Uh, let me see now if I can. And I have used videos from uh, uh, earlier years. I, I don't. I don't like to use videos from pre-competition that we just have seen, because uh, I will use lifts that, uh, what you see, they are, I can use them without uh, doing anything wrong about to the referees that did that. But Tina, you are in one or two of them, you know? <laughs> because I want to discuss with you as we, as we did last year, okay? But this one, uh, let us see if I can put this one up. And when I start the video, can you, you can see the video now? You cannot, okay. Then I will do something else. We cannot see it. Okay, I understand why. Uh, if I do like this, you will see it. Just one second. Yes, and... now we can see it. Yeah. Um, ah, let me see if I... Also... Share it with the sound just to one second more. Yeah. I just wanted to, to make sure that you could hear the sound. Uh, when you see this lift, it's not a good position to, to have a good view of this, but look at his left arm after when he's in the split. That's what I want you to do. Look at his left arm. And then he push out, he presses out the left arm. Was it understandable? Yes, it was. Yep, yeah. yeah. so you could see the, the left hand. He, it was a short stop and then they pressed out after the split was in its lowest position. That's what we call the press out. And then we will see uh, bending and extending. I think the size of this picture is big enough so I don't make it bigger. 
and watch him while he's walking on the platform. Not now, but especially now. Did you see that? This is uh, a very clear uh, example of bending extending. We can see it once more. This time I have chosen to have the clear, the clear ones. It's uh, very easy to see. Maybe already there, but for sure when he was walking on the platform. Um, when we uh, adjudicate such lifts like the press out and the bending extending, of course, if you see a bending extending, you must press red, but be sure. Uh, not all uh, movements in the elbow are bending extending, not all. The, you, you must be allowed to, ch to, to check the arms like you are fighting with the bar. But of course, if you see, I don't know if you see my picture now, <laughs> but if you see there is a bending, of course you must, uh, you must uh, press the red one, but you must let the, the lifter fight with the bar, uh, shaking or whatever. Uh, but there is not, nothing like, it, oh, it was so small, so I didn't do it. If, if it is there, you must do it. You must make the red one. That, that's, uh, that's a very important thing. And of course, when you're sitting at home, looking at the video, if you uh, show and look at the video in slow motion, all lifts, all lifts will be red lifts. So uh, it's what you see there with your clear eyes. Uh, and be sure, if, if you are not uh, sure that you did see uh, a bending extending or a press out, I would press uh, give a white, and then you have the jury. They will help you to land this correctly. The jury are there to help the referees because the referees has to adjudicate the lift when uh, the in a, just a small part of a second. So th this is important. And Trygve, that's also why the video playback must be in in normal um, speed or whatever you call it. Because as you say, if we put it in slow motion, then everybody makes bend extend or press out because we have motion in, in the arms. So so that's a very good point. Yeah, uh, it's very important. The only uh, time when the, the jury used the slow motion is, you know, by elbow in the knee or... Yes or uh, dropping the bar from a too high position and th things like that. But bending, yeah. extending, it's the, no. uh, you must see it. With, if you cannot see it with your bare eyes, it's white. So th that's my opinion. Okay. Then uh, the clean. Um, if you place the bar below the chest before its po final position, the so-called double clean or dirty clean, it's also, of course, a red light. But we will see here if I have a video with that one. Of course, uh, Patrick, I use a Swedish girl here. And she's married in Norway now, so maybe she's half Norwegian. <laughs> I think she's Norwegian now. <laughs> and look there. I will stop. I will stop the video, and we'll see it again. Look what happens. She's uh, having a clean where she's split, and then she moves there, and then she moves the bar. Everyone could see it. We can see the whole lift. And and I want to see the lights. It was three red, and then I will ask. I cannot ask you because you have, have, but I can tell you why did not, why did not the three referees push when before the jerk? In this case, probably the referees did not see it, and they were or they were not aware that she had the dirty clean. Otherwise, she should have the down signal before the jerk. So probably the referees thought that there was some bending extending or whatever. It might, it might have been. It was not a, not a good lift. So, but, but uh, she should have the down signal already. I will show you. Here. 
Here should the down signal come, the red lights. If the referee saw it, if the referee saw it. Okay. But she was very fast, so maybe they didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, she, she was a track and field. I know that she has uh, a silver medal at the, the Swedish 100 meter track and field championships. So she was she was fast, but this was this lift was not not so fast. <laughs> okay, and then we have touching the uh, the tights or the knees with the elbows or the upper arms, uh, what we call an elbow touch. It's also extremely difficult to see. And you could hear the referees, they did see it and they gave her the down signal. I guess you heard the beep. I will play that in a slower for you to see it easier. We start here, here. Let me see. Here you can easily see it, both arms probably. And then the referees gave her red or down signal. It's very good uh, refereeing. And Trygve, I'm just yeah. told that um, this lifter is the girl um, of the uh, Slovakian weightlifting president's wife. Yeah, I know. That's why <laughs> they, they told me that's why I wanted to take it. <laughs> I'm just, uh, yeah, I, I knew that. <laughs> very good. Um, then you have uh, the jerk. Any apparent if effort to jerk is uh, which is not completed, including lowering the body or bending the knees. And before I show you the video, some new referees tells me that it's very difficult to see if the knees are bent because they wanted to try to jerk it, or if it was just to change the grip or move the bar a little bit because it hurts. But actually, it is very easy to see if they, if the, if it is an apparent effort to jerk or if it is just uh, changing the grip. So the, 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 the video I will show you now is, very, you can see it very, very easy. And even the audience saw it immediately. Only the lifter didn't understand, but that happens. That happens. So I it's, guess it's everyone. It's not the first time. <laughs> no, it's not the first time. <laughs> it's fantastic that you have the sound on because it's it's very good. It gives us the feeling of of uh, being yeah. there as well. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it once more. Let me see. And it, of course, wouldn't look like this if it was just uh, changing the grip or moving the bar a little bit to avoid, avoid it to hurt. So, okay. And now we come to a lift, uh, Tina, where you were a referee. <laughs> it was in Israel, 2014, was it? Um, yes. I am not sure. Or, or I have my opinion about this lift and I will tell you later uh, because I have seen it in slow motion, but we can, we can see it first and then I can, um, let's see it. Former world record holder in this discipline 236 at his very best. Right, I blinked then, and I didn't actually see if the bar was stationary on his shoulders. 
because the rule is that the lifter should be complete motionless before he do, does the jerk. The, the, the bar can oscillate if it is a natural oscillating because of the lifting. And it obviously was natural. The oscillating was natural here. But was the lifter motionless? That's the question. Can you play it again? Uh, yep. They ask Chiara from Italy. Yep. And in my opinion, he wasn't motionless. So, so that was what I, I gave him. A, I think I gave him a red in 2014. I can't remember, but I remember him lifting. And, and it's, he's very difficult. Very he's, difficult. He's, he is difficult. Yeah. Extremely difficult. Yeah. Former world record holder in this discipline, 236 at his very best. Then, and I, uh, I will show you this in slow motion, Antina. Then we can discuss <laughs> if it was. <laughs> but I, but I, I am sure that I would do the red light also. But I was after seeing it in slow motion. I was not sure. Let let, let us. Uh... Well, after the second time, I was even more sure. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> let us see. I will then try to. I, I will try to stop it here. Okay. He's motionless, Tina. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he, if he sure. is. <laughs> I think he is extremely good at 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 using the bar. The the um, I don't know what it's called, but the the movement in the bar, so yeah. it appears not. But I think this is very very well studied in in studied or whatever you call it. I think this is something he's doing in the practice, so he can get the full credit for it. That's my opinion. But but you cannot sit and and analyze and dissect yeah. when you are refereeing. You have to use your common sense. And you have to make your uh, your decision in a nanosecond. Yeah, that's that's the the, the problem. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I would say that if you are not sure, give him white, and then the jury can decide. Mm. We have a question. Oh, first yeah. of all, we have one saying, "I will give him white." That's mm. good. And then we have um, Norway asking. Uh, Tina, can you describe where you see the motion in the lifter? I can see motion in the upper body, but I think it is because of the bar. So it's a question of deliberate or not. And I think I just answered that before. Um, and and it, as Patrick says, if you are not sure, give white. And exactly, that's what we should do. Yeah. Always the benefit of, of the lifter. If yeah, in in, su in in such cases, if you are a referee and you are sure he was uh, was uh, not motionless, give him red. But if you are not sure, give him white. Yeah. Because otherwise, we punish the lifters, and the, and and you have the jury; they will help you. Yeah. To to find the correct. But position. still, I I think it's difficult because when he comes up from the clean, then mm. he he drops he, he the bar is going up and then he drops it and then immediately when it hits the shoulders when you see it in slow-mo then he goes down and yeah. then you can see the barbell is like really yeah. uh, good speed so yeah but it's 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 exactly what these seminars are so good for so we can discuss this because we don't have time to do it anyway at, at another time so very good and I, I choose uh, uh, exactly this list because I know knew that you had been a referee <laughs> there and we could discuss it between us. Yeah. I wouldn't do that if not. If not. No. And then here is, if you're looking for if the lifter is motionless or not, you can look uh, and see if he's shaking the arms, if he's shaking the shoulders to get advantage to oscillate the barbell. Or if uh, you, you can see small repeated uh, slight knee bendings, then you can for sure uh, say that uh, 
he is uh, oscillating the the bar by purpose and uh, in all the european championships the last three four years uh, we i and you uh, we have a tendency to give good lift uh, on lift that should be red and the jury gi gives good uh, good lift also i have been sitting as a jury president and uh, probably should have given red light because you can see that especially the the arms like shown here goes up and down and when you see that the lift is standing there for a long time and the bar keeps moving it will not do that if you don't keep it uh, moving so this is something that the IWF technical committee should discuss more because this is not fair this rule is unfair uh, in many time in, in many ways when we adjudicate it Anyone Woodburn? who wants to comment? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Patrick, he says that sometimes you can see the bar os oscillating more after a while, and then you know it's deliberate. Yeah, that, that's I think, uh, good. I think what is what is for me when I'm watching, I look at the chest, because mm. if you start to 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 use your chest a lot or taking in breathing in a lot of air, then there will be motion in the bar. Mm. So. Yeah, I think this is uh, one of the uh, the rules that is most difficult to adjudicate, mm. and uh, I would uh, I really think the IWF should uh, make some not change the rule, but make it clear what is allowed and what is not allowed. <clears throat> then uh, we will see uh, a video with dropping the barbell above the shoulders. Uh, uh, we, we have another question or another comment. Yeah. Yep. Some lifters breathe heavy to gain movement. Yes. How much is allowed? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. If you just yeah, if you're, that's the problem. Yeah. If you are breathing and it's it's natural and it's allowed, that's what. Uh, and if they do that several times in a row, they will have uh, oscillation. And it's very difficult to tell that oh, you did it only because of the, to gain the oscillation. Uh, so uh, to know yes. if they do it. And can you say that you're allowed to breathe as much as you can, but but you need to have the bar motionless before you can do the jerk? And and if you stand for a long time because you're breathing a lot, then it gets tougher, and and you probably won't get the lift. So yeah. so it's to to just to get the air to to make the jerk. Yeah, yeah. Because and if, if you, you do. yeah, and Natalie Natalia from uh, Moldova, she says if you breathe too much, you get dizzy. You know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and Jenny great. Schumacher from US, she says, I thought it was the body that needed to be motionless, not the bar. Yeah, it is the body. The body needs to be needs to be motionless. Earlier, it was the old rule was the bar and the, yeah. the body. Now it's the body. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Didn't I say that? I maybe hope so. I maybe I said something else, but but we mean that. Thank yeah, you, Jenny, yeah. for. Yeah. Okay. Um, this uh, dropping the barber from above the shoulders, we even saw several times in uh, in Armenia also. I don't understand how the lifters can forget it. And Sweden again, Patrick. I guess everyone could see that. It's a red lift. I guess there is no much to discuss. And this is also a rule that the first time it happens, we have a tendency to give a white and then we, oh, she would drop too high. So pay attention to, to this. Okay. And then uh, this so, is also- Trykve, we have some comments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick says that this lifter is actually a referee now. So that's good. And um, Norway says we even had a referee instructor. Norway forgetting this rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Instructor in Norway forgetting this rule. Yeah, it happens. It happens. We are humans. We are humans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it happens. And uh, this lift, uh, it's a, quite a long video, and you will not see the dropping of the bar from above before. Uh, a little while, but but we'll look at have a look at the whole lift. And Tina, I think you were 
Also, yes. referee on this one. <laughs> I was. <laughs> 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 oxygen on board so that you can prepare for the jerk he didn't do that so he's basically holding his breath from start to finish hence the lack of oxygen to the brain it was the wrong lifter on the well, attempt board that's the why he turned and then it was okay the and it could go into the platform now you can see the loaders running back on i will uh, push the video a little bit because i know that it starts so demanov here. kilograms here in terms of yeah. total will take him from second up into first if he gets this <clears throat> has to work a bit harder than his first attempt. <laughs> he needs to stand still. And then he starts start walking. Movement in the elbow. No, he needs to stand still. And of course you didn't see the the, the plates here. And it was a red lift. Wow, he's looking We'll see it uh, again. So that was okay, although it's rolled on the elbow. Let's see. He's saying Two no, red, one lift. white. Let us see what's happened. You see it again? This is the replay. To keep it overhead. That's good. There we are. His right elbow. Two flexions. Three flexions. He probably can't feel what's the difference between a flexion and extension and just and just shaking. That's tough. That's really tough. And that's going to have taken so much. And now we can see it from a boat. How long he was actually fighting with that for? Five, six, seven seconds. It went on a long time there. He's going to be exhausted coming out for his third and final attempt, and he's not going to have that long to recover. Look now. No, two minutes. It touches the platform. No you can see that. Okay. Uh, we did see that uh, the it was two reds and one white, and then we can speculate why didn't the down signal come very early when he had the flexions, the bending, extending. <laughs> Well, yeah, probably because only one referee had a red or or no one. And it could have been me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it was you. I know that you were, were one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I saw the, the bend extend in the arms, in the elbows in the beginning, and then he, he continued and then he he actually was motionless. So but then he started to move again and then he actually thought that he didn't get the lift because he he, he didn't touch the um, the platform when dropping the bubble, but he did. So he that did. was not why he, he didn't get the lift. Hmm. Uh, but I can see that my good friend Kiara, she says that one, two, three times bending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it would have, because uh, of course, uh, the lift protested because uh, he was sure that the red lift was because he didn't touch the platform, but actually he did. And you could all see that. I will <clears throat> here. This uh, uh, picture is taken from the IWF um, PowerPoint. And this is what happened on this lift. It's quite uh, exactly the, what, what happened. This is not allowed. The, the bar, the, the bar uh, lands outside, but here it touches the platform first. And uh, I know, and even in Armenia, we had we had discussions if a lift was on the platform or, or off the platform. Uh, but the video shows that it touched the platform. And I know that there is a discussion in many countries and also in Norway and uh, all around the world, how much uh, of the plate will uh, will have to touch the platform, how much will be must be, must be up on the top of the platform and, 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 and is this allowed? And this is what the IWF technical committee says. Mm -hmm. This and is what the we, IWF... Yeah, we also had an incident last year in Albania with a Georgian lifter. Um, and he also dropped the bubble like, like, okay, but it was very difficult to see. And, uh, and the referees gave him a no lift. And in the jury, we stopped because he was motionless before he dropped the bar. He was also walking, but he didn't have any bend extend or bend out, um, press out or anything. He was motionless and then he started to walk and then he dropped the barbell. So so actually the jury that I was in, we um, overruled and gave him a good lift. I remember that one. Yeah. So, so, so this is uh, for all those who have discussed this, this is how the IWF technical committee pictures this like this this is enough uh actually 
it says that the whole barbell has to land on the platform. And that's the problem, the whole. Because when you say that, it, uh, it doesn't look that this, that this is the whole. So the, the, the wording of that rule should be changed to make it easier. I think, I think actually, Troik, the, the whole bubble is on the platform. It's just on the very, <laughs> yeah, outside, yeah. very close to the, to the end. So yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. A, the, it's a competition of words. Yeah, yeah, complete platform, not whole, but the complete bubble, it says, like here. So that's, uh, but, but this is how the, it's going to be understood. This is how we sh shall understand it. So uh, then it should be. So, uh, and of course, this is extremely difficult for the referees to see because they are looking from uh, at a lift from the front side. So uh, give the white one a white, red, white light if you are not sure. And then the, the jury will uh, help you if, if you didn't see it correctly because uh, you, you are not, a, it's not possible for you to see if it is two centimeters more or less. If it touch, if it's touching the the platform, it's okay. That's what I would would say. Okay, I will go have to go a little bit further, and of course, <clears throat> uh, looking at uh, the the Russian lifter who was fighting with the bar, and Tina gave him a red. If you see a fault or incorrect movement, press red immediately. If no lift, the sooner the better to save the athlete's energy. Don't let the the lifter make the jerk if you already want to to give red uh, after the clean, for example. <clears throat> Ref <clears throat> referees must watch carefully until the athlete becomes motionless in all parts of the body. Arms and legs are fully extended. Feet and barbell are in line and parallel to the plane of the trunk. So wait, wait, wait before you give the down signal. Of course, we, it's important to give the down signal as early as possible, but sometimes we give it too early. So uh, it's better uh, to, to, to wait uh, half a second at least, <laughs> uh, to give, also to give the lifter a possibility to, uh, to be motionless. I will show you here. Trygve, we have a, a comment from uh... yeah. Ceciano in Italy, he says he was in the jury in, uh, at the European Championships in Armenia. And he says that in Armenia, from the jury, we can't see the edge of the platform where was the protection, uh, there was the protection bar. So, so that makes it difficult to see the whole platform. Yeah, that, and we have also mentioned it in the, our report, which I sent yeah. to you yesterday, Tina. Yes. So to all the... To all the referees in Armenia, we have finished uh, the president's report and it, it, we have sent it uh, to Tina and Milan. I am sure they will distribute it because uh, it was not so easy. And uh, Trojkvi, just to let you know, we have 99 participants today. Oh, perfect. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And here, here is what I mean by uh, uh, complete uh, how you should be staying there uh, uh, before the down signal comes. This is okay with the arms, but the knees are bended. You should, you must wait. Don't give uh, the, the down signal. And here, this one, the feet should also be parallel. It's not, you will have to wait. And here, the body uh, is not parallel the trunk to the trunk and uh, and in plane with the, the barbell and uh, also the in line with the feet. Da -da -da -da! 100 participants. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, Keep I on going. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and also this one, uh, if uh, the lifter is still rotating, you must wait. And if he's still walking, you must wait. It's very important. You have to wait until final motionless position uh, and that all these uh, positions is correct. And uh, of course, well-coached athletes uh, will still try to attain the final motionless position even after two of the referees press white. So 
in such case, if you are the only one that didn't press anything or you pressed red, for example, because it was not motionless, we have you must press white, the, the third one also, because uh, he, two, two referees gave the down signal, but the lifter didn't want to put the bar down because he understood that there might be some problems. And then he retained the motionless position and everything was okay. And then he dropped the bar and it should be a white lift. So this is for the coaches. Tell your lifters. We have this lift from, um, uh, from a competition in Argentina recently, Matty Rogers. She got a down signal and she uh, claims and, and tells that this is the fault of the referees. It is not. It's her. It's her fault. She should have waited. She should not have dropped the bar when she was not motionless. In my opinion, I am sure my, a lot of you have seen this. This is a, has been a lift uh, on the uh, YouTube and all over uh, and Instagram and been commenting. And uh, it was a red lift, obvious. So the referees made correct. And if that it hasn't heard or noticed the down signal, remember the center referee gives the audible and visible down signal by saying down. And the, the movement of your hand and your voice must be at the same time down and do it clear. And don't be afraid uh, to do it. Patrick, it might be, yeah. Patrick says that he agrees with you with the Matt, Matty Rogers situation, and I do too. Yeah, I, I, am, uh, I wanted to say that because when I see what uh, people have written about the referees, it makes me angry, actually. <laughs> they, they really don't uh, know the rules. So uh, that's good. Um, yeah, it might be. We have, a, we have another question or comment. Uh, if using flags, and the center referee tells the lifter to put the bar down, but you as a side referee did not agree the lifter was still, would you hit red, assuming again, that it is the lifter's responsibility to stay still? No, no, no. Uh, of, of course, it, it, is, it, it, is, it is in the cases that the, the down signal comes and the lifter starts moving uh, and uh, uh, so now uh, when the down signal comes and it's clear, but in some cases it, it's not clear. Uh, and then uh, uh, then I think it's uh, also the, up to the, there is actually uh, in the rules um, a paragraph that says that it's uh, the lifters, the lifters uh, uh, that should make sure that he, everything he does applies to the rules. So, but this is of course difficult. Of course, uh, in the case I mentioned uh, by Matty Rogers, uh, she was for sure not the, setting the bar down. She was missing the bar. And that's a different thing. But Troikway, it could also be the other way around that the yeah. lifter do not get down signal. And then they uh -huh. start yelling at the referees, come on, give her down. Yeah, but your legs are not stretched. Yeah, you're not yeah. your legs are not fully uh, extended so okay. so it that's why we say that the athlete should be well coached or yeah. your feet are not in line or whatever hmm? mm. yeah, i think yeah. we have some more comments i will just read them just a second um arayaki says he thinks it's a no lift and we agree with that also. If center referee does not say down, whether in such a situation, side referee can say down with audible uh, and visible sign? No, it is the center referee that should do it. Yes, I It agree. is the center referee. It, uh, in, in the rules anyway, it's only mentioned the center referee. So what will happen in such case? Uh, the lifter will probably have to drop the bar after a while. And then the jury can give him a new attempt, for example. But this has to be, this is uh, very, very difficult. Uh, and I guess that in most cases, the, the, it will be a red lift and the jury cannot do, cannot do anything. Because he dropped the bar before the down signal. That's the rule. That's the rule. 
I agree, Tina. It must be like that. Totally. Yes. Always yeah. agreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes this is what happens sometimes that uh, the referee light system is broken and no stone signal comes. And uh, the center referee is not aware that the signal is broken. So if you are a center referee and you think, hmm, why doesn't uh, I have pushed? Why is there no down signal? Look on your side very fast to see if there is some, uh, if the side referees can give you a signal to see if, uh, if they think, because they can do it by gesture or something like uh, with thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever uh, to, to help the, um, the center referee. Uh, letting him know that you must give a down signal. But this is always difficult. Um, and after um, the referee's gay white, if the athlete lowered the barbell behind him, drop the bar from above the shoulders, or fail to replace the complete barbell on the platform, you can change your decision with, uh, within three seconds. Uh, and if you fail to change in three seconds, you can always use the flags afterwards. It's uh, you are allowed to do that, so do, so do it. Uh, don't be afraid of raising your flag, showing that uh, I made a mistake, I pushed the wrong button, or something happened after the comp after the lift. This is important, but you have three three seconds. May I ask one question? We have we have a question. Please uh, do it in the chat because it's it's difficult for us to 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 hear everybody. So so center referee must check with side referee before giving a down signal if the electronic system goes down. That's a question. Uh, he, he must not, but he should try to see if there is a signal. Of course, if he is if he is sure that something is wrong, he must immediately give the down signal. But if, if it is possible for him to have contacts very fast to mm -hmm. see, uh, it will also help him. But uh, it must be fast because we cannot hold the lifter for long. That will be very, but, very tough. But my question is, in this way, the center referee may be influenced by the decision of the side referee. Yeah, he, he, he might be, but he should not be. That's the part of refereeing, being mm -hmm. impartial. You shall not let yourself be influenced by anyone. And, and of course, always when we use the flags, the referees might be influenced by other referees. Hmm. If you use flags, that will always happen. Because yeah. when we use the flags, we will use them after the bar has dropped. And Trygve, we have another question. So center referee can give down signal with just one vote? Yes, if he's, if he's sure. If he's sure that something is wrong, he, he, he shall do, must do it, because otherwise the lifter will stay there for minutes. Ages. And that's why, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why I say if you have time to to look to the left and and right fast to see if something is, then the the side referees can help you, and give by gesture uh, tell you that give him a down signal. Or if you're sure, just do it. And we have another question: What if nothing is wrong? Do you need to check that the other referees had finished judging? No, you don't. This is the responsibility of the of the center referee, and this is the why the center referee position is more important or more difficult or whatever. Uh, and that center referee really, really has to pay attention to what what's happening. This is anyway the way I understand the rules, and I think that's mm -hmm. how most of us understand the rules. I guess that if someone totally disagreed, just tell us and we we, we can accept that also. <laughs> but this is my advice anyway, and my understanding of the rules. Uh, the, the, um, the rules and regulations doesn't say anything about the side referees that they can say, give a down signal or, or whatever, but, uh, but they, they should uh, really help the center referee if it is possible. And we have a very good saying that use your common sense. Yeah. So this is what you should do here. Uh, probably is something wrong with the with the system. That's why there is no visible down signal. And then if you think that everything is okay, 
give a down signal with the hand yeah. and and yeah. I, I can tell you that I have done this uh, as a center referee at a world record attempt because I was sure something was wrong, and uh, and the lift was good. It was in the 82 and a half kilogram category in uh, La Coronia. I remember it where I think it was Mark Huster. But uh, I think it was 216 or something. That was in the last yeah. century, in 1999. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember it so well because it was a world record. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah. Troikbe, it's, it's eight o'clock now. Yeah, uh, I don't think be... you should speed up, but but um, just so you know that that it's eight o'clock. Yeah, we are, we are very close to the end. Uh, if an athlete touches the bar, this is the, one of the new rules. That was why I wanted to mention it. If an athlete touches the barbell with the footwear before the attempt, the referees must press red, as before. But if the barbell is touched after a successful attempt with his or her feet, the referee's decision will not be reversed. However, the jury will give a warning to the athlete. And uh, if the athlete repeat, repeats this uh, in a sub subsequent lift, the lift will be a no lift. In the uh, earlier, it was a red, uh, even if you did it after the lift, but now it's just a warning from the from the jury. The, so that's a new one. And then, yeah, that was the last one. Seems like. You forgot the undergarment. I heard it came. Yeah. 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 I, 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 so I, I switched two in a, in a row. Uh, like it's. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, please, may I have one question uh, regarding the previous uh, rules? Uh, in a subsequent, uh, in a subsequent lift, this one last one, when uh, when the lifter uh, touches the uh, uh, barber with the footwear after completion of the lift, then the uh, decision is not uh, reversed by the uh, referee, but warning is first time warning is given by the jury. But what yes. will happen in the what will happen in the second term? The decision will be reversed by the referee or it will be no ripped by the jury. The rules says nothing about it, but as I understand it, and uh, I guess Tina can help me, as I understand it, the referee knows that he has already got a warning and they should give a red lift. The, so the, I the, that the referee should reverse the decision. Yes, the referee should reverse this the is decision. how I understand it, but hmm. the rules, and regulations doesn't say how it should work. Yes, this is that is why uh, my question yeah. is. Mm. Yeah. It, it, and the, the rule has just changed, so we haven't tried it so much, so it's also new for us. Yeah. But this is how I understand it, and I guess that the Milan can tell us if I am wrong. <laughs> but but uh, I'm sure that all these questions also we will lift to the IWF technical mm. committee because. Mm. Since the rules and regulations does not answer your question correctly or directly, uh, I think, but this is how I understand it because the referees should obviously know that he has already got a warning. And Kiara asks, how can referees know that athlete has received a warning from the jury? The speaker will say it, of course. So that's why they know it. What, what will happen is that uh, the referees will stop the competition. They will ask the technical controller to come to the table and they will tell him this and he will go to the speaker and to the lifter and tell the lifter that you have got a warning. Mm. I, guess, I guess this is a normal procedure that, that it will, then the, everyone will know. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and then it was uh, this rule. This is how it is written in the uh, regulations oh. now in 6.4. The athletes must be weighed in undergarments. Uh, and it says articles of the athlete's outfit. Someone has their, uh, please mute everyone that is not. Uh, articles of the athlete's outfit, costume, unitard, shorts, uh, and t-shirts are not considered as undergarments. Athletes must not wear shoes or socks or any footwear during the weigh-in. This is how it is written now but i know through tina that there has been a meeting in the iwf technical committee and they have put forward to the ivf technical um, executive board a proposal which i cannot tell you because uh, it's not official 
there, something will happen with this happen with this wording because at least at the European Championships it was a big discussion about this the bra for the girls and not for the boys and so on and so on. Yes, that and that's that's correct. Yeah, of course. And it's correct that we discussed it in IWF technical committee. And of course, we cannot say it now because the executive board doesn't know yet and they will approve, but it, it will be a better one, I can say. <laughs> I'm teasing so you will, now. <laughs> yeah. So, but until, but until that happens, we have to follow this rule. So that's, that's the rules. And um, you will receive a certificate for participating at this seminar. And you can see in the down left part of the picture, write to office at evf.sport, your surname, name, and country. And if there are several from the same country, please let one of you send one email to the office and uh, the certificate of participation will be sent to, to you all. And uh, uh, another thing, when, if, if uh, yeah, it says that one email with all names and their email addresses, if, if you add that, because then uh, the office can send it directly to you. Okay. Hmm. Thank you so much for listening. So, Trykvist, thank you so much. It was fantastic. And uh, we have lots of comments. Thank you, comments in, uh, in the chat. People are very fond of of the the seminar, and and for me it's 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 very good, and it makes so good sense to do it. So thank you so much, Trykve, for taking us through the valley of lifts and all the rules as a referee. And uh, next week we have Patrick Helgeson, who will do the chief marshal position, and I hope to have also 100 participants because this is a very good position also to to nerd with uh, after you have been a referee for some time so hope to see you very soon and thank you so much for joining us we are now 95 but we were 100 persons at a time so thank you so much have a great evening see you thank next you. week thank you bye 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 Good night, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. And this time, the this time, the this time. Bye. 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 Gracias. Thank you. Good night to all.